Google Fiber's got a competitor. The Galaxy S4 is almost here and Google now has hit the iOS. It's May 3rd, I'm Daria, and this is the Red Hetty Geek Show. Hey Google Fiber, watch out! Vermont Telephone Co. or VTEL might be planning on making your $70 gigabit price look a bit bulky. The company has begun offering a $35 a month internet service with gigabit speeds. So far, about 600 have subscribed, and the company plans on offering over 17,000 by mid-2014. Right around the date, Google Fiber is alleged to hit Austin, Texas. The new wave of the internet may sure as heck be gigabit. Despite all the static surrounding the new Xbox 720, Microsoft's plans for Illumaroom is something to be excited about. The Illumaroom will be a small, wide-angled projection box that can sit on your coffee table. The Xbox Kinect is able to capture the color scheme and geometry of the room. The projector then displays content over a large area surrounding the TV. Microsoft says Illumaroom is able to self-calibrate and work in any living room. It's incredible to envision what it will do to our gaming experience. Imagine playing Call of Duty and explosions scattering to the walls, broadening your field of view, distorting reality, wobbling effects? Cool. <laughs> Speaking of gaming, want to know what water will look like in future games? This. How? Position-Based Fluids, or PBD is a new fluid simulation algorithm that allows water to look incredibly realistic with bouncing waves and fluent motions. The videos shown are simulating how the system functions. Basically, the water is displayed as thousands of particles that employ the correct physics with each other's motions and its surroundings. We could see it enhance gaming and film drastically. NVIDIA representatives show these video demonstrations of the PVD effect. They state, in fluid simulation, enforcing incompressibility is crucial for realism, is also computationally expensive. However, can't wait to see this in future games and film. Galaxy S4 is coming. Has anyone heard more hype about a smartphone's latest release? Well, the features explain it all. Besides being described as a meaningful live companion by Samsung product designers, their philosophy was to create something like you've never seen before. These designers examined everything and refined it over and over until they considered it flawless. The features are quite impressive. When viewing a web page, a sensor detects your eye movements and scrolls the page for you. It even pauses a video when you look away from the screen. Similar to the Xbox Kinect, it has a no touch screen. To answer the phone, just wave your hand. You can of course navigate your apps just by hovering your finger over the screen. The S4 can also be used as a universal remote control. Another feature worth mentioning is voice commands. If the camera app is running, say cheese and it'll snap a photo. Another is the ability to record sound clips when a photo is taken. Say your daughter's doing a cartwheel and giggling her butt off. You can, you can capture that. <laughs> Google Now officially became available on iOS this week. The app features virtual cards that presents information based on your location, something you have requested, or even what Google Now predicts based on previous searches. It is being called a good Siri supplement in that it supplies content before you even have to ask. Some are unhappy with the manner in which it hinders on privacy. For Google Now to be fully functional, you have to let it be exposed to your browser history, content on your calendar, Gmail account, and more. Google Now's distinguishing characteristic is its predictability. Some say Google is trying to upstage Siri. Huffington Post states, Google Now's invasion of Siri's turf marks Google Inc.'s attempt to lure iPhone and iPad users away from a service that Apple built into its own devices. Funny enough, when asked for an opinion on Google Now, Siri responds, if it's all the same to you, I'd rather Google later. Politics aside, both applications have their own properties that make them unique. Have y'all heard of getting scroogled? Well, Microsoft has come up with an amusing way of encouraging users to leave Google's Gmail service by utilizing privacy concerns to hook their message. The software giant is spending millions of dollars on the Don't Get Scroogled campaign, which have run in print, aired on television, and online. 
In the latest commercial, Bing demands that when you buy an app from Google, information including your name, neighborhood, and email are sent to the Android app maker without informing you. You notice people approaching the couple about their personal app purchases, a Google car driving by, and even snapping a photo at the end. Wow. Bold as it is, Bing also states, if you can't trust Google's App Store, how can you trust them for anything? Microsoft began the campaign to, quote, educate Americans about Google's practice of going through the contents of all Gmail emails to sell and target ads. However, Microsoft vows to make sure ads are safe, unobtrusive, and relevant. Galaxy S4, the gorgeous, business-like, lightweight exterior, the ample features that require less handling and touching. What do you guys think? Anyone pre-ordered it yet? Or are you feeling suffice with your S3? Do you think the scrolling as you read option could make you dizzy? What do you think of Google Now? Have you used it? And did it scare the crap out of you because it knew everything you were doing? How did it know you were driving home? Does it seem to know what you want to do or what you want before you even know? iOS users, are you gonna use the app? Are you okay with sticking with Surrey? Do you even like her? Bing has some um, guts. What do you think of their campaign? Could it stop Google? Will it encourage users to switch to Windows Phone Store or Bing as their homepage? Comments below, please. This is not only for my curiosity, but everyone else who watches this show. By the way, thanks for watching. On vacation next week, but I will see you guys very soon. Ah.